Welcome, in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, and to remember before God our brother, Norman Wayne Sawyer, to give thanks for his life and to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. So let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. All who are baptized into Christ has put on Christ. In his baptism, Norman was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, he shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection, the life, who suffered death for all humanity and who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Norman. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to have as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, Console us who mourn, 
Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now Neil and Herb wants to share a little remembrance. I'm going to start with a quote by Garrison Keillor, uh, somewhat the famed author now, but he said, they say such nice things at funerals that it makes me sad to realize that I'm going to miss mine by just a few days. Uh, I, I bring that up because as we were talking after my dad had passed with my brother and sister, and I know my sister brought up that mm, my dad had, had or, you know, a little over nine years ago, or coming up on nine years ago, my dad had an accident that changed his life and all of our lives. And, after which so many people from the community and the church and family and friends donated time, and, but spent so much time, people he hadn't seen in a long time came out to, if they couldn't come, they wrote things, came out to see him, and it's always stuck with him and stuck with our family, and we're eternally grateful for that. And uh, in a way, you know, it's kind of like, it's toward the end of his life, I mean, in the spectrum of things, and it was a way that uh, he got to see all these people that we aren't, able to be with today. Uh, you know, my dad was many things. He was honest, hardworking. His, his deal was as good as his handshake. He was a leader that came up with ideas, and he loved working with other people. Um, he loved negotiating a deal, whether buying hay or selling, selling something. And upon, even though getting the deal was important to him, it was more about doing an honest deal and having fun with it. It's something I always appreciate and learn from. Uh, my dad had quick wit and a, a dry sense of humor. I don't know why, I, I just think of this little story that came up. We had an intern on the farm, and she was uh, going to Iowa State, I think, and she was wanting to become a, a veterinarian, so she wanted an experience on the farm, uh, kind of go on her resume and apply for get into vet school. She never worked with large animals, and it didn't take long for us to assess it. She had never worked with large animals, probably not ever going to work with large animals, but she ended up being very good help. And uh, anyways, like the first day there, that we had these two bottle cabs, and it was tradition on the farm to name the bottle cabs, and, uh, which we hadn't done yet. And, and uh, this, she's, this is, well, her young lady was really nice, and she, but she was very kind of timid. And so <laughs> we showed her how to feed the bottle cabs, something she took to and fed the rest of the summer. But she, we said, so my dad turned to her and said right away, well, what are you going to name them? And, you know, she's new to us and new to us and everything. And she says, well, I don't know. I'll have to ask my mother. And so <laughs> my dad said right away, well, that's interesting names. And we spent the rest of the summer calling one cat, I don't know, and I'll have to ask my mother, the other one. But it's just kind of something, those little things that he would do that always, you know, we're going to miss. Um, dad was always there for us, uh, raising us on the farm. And um, he always wanted us to be, to do whatever we, endeavor we pursued and, and um, you know, he, I know he could be bullheaded once in a while, but he also had a, a great sense of sensibility and, and uh, uh, you know, he, he was always there to, to take a phone call and, and, and help out uh, and answer any questions or, or if you needed something. I, I, people talk, you know, my, when I talked to my sister and my brother, we talked about times and, and my wife brought up a time where after we were married, she was out biking and a storm came up and I don't know where I was and she, she ended up calling him to pick her up and with some friends and take him to their bikes and, and Sarah talked about, even though he wasn't feel, you know, feeling good one day, he did come up and help her move stuff. Just little things like that that we'll all miss that, you know, a good dad is there for. Uh, and he was always there to take a call, which could be, well, especially he, at one time he before cell phones and everything, he had put a device on the outside of the house that would ring really loud, so when we were out doing chores, we, he wouldn't miss a call, and the, which then became our job to run up and catch the phone before the person, you know, the phone quit ringing. And then with the advent of cell phones, these things came worse because he always wanted to take the call. And, and then to the point where uh, 
I'm the younger guy loading the cattle. I'm in the pen with the cattle who are not happy I'm there. And dad's only job was to shut the gate, slide the gate closed, and I get some angry cattle loaded on, and the phone rings, and of course he took the call. So <laughs> these things happen. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, and it, you know, and one thing I always thought about my dad too is he always like had the wit and the, a sense of timing and, and to tell people things or, or help us out. And, and, and uh, I just think about also my wedding day, which was like the hottest day of the summer and somebody wanted to have it in the middle of summer. And, and in the middle of the wedding, there was a time where we looked over and there was a, he had a handkerchief, somebody had a handkerchief, my brother or, or he did. And, I remember my brother got it out because he was just going to stand up and I was dripping, sweating, you know, and, and he kind of gestured over to my brother, just wait a second, and, and there was kind of even even a better break to just have this little gesture of like, everybody got a kind of a chuckle out of it, but he always had that sense of, of timing and, and, uh, and just little things like that, and always, I always remember when he was younger, I always had a handkerchief in his back pocket for when we got cut or something needed something you need to wipe away. So I just say, well, Dad, um, you know, you, you've exited the stage here. And you have, uh, <laughs> your timing is a little off right now. It's in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, we couldn't do the things that we wanted to do for your service, have our cousin, you know, cousins be your pallbearers and everybody here. But, uh, but I hope you have the best seat in the house to watch the rest of all of our lives play out. So, and the show must go on. Grace, peace, and love. Thank you.
21. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, where whence cometh my help. My help, help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven, heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your, your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. A reading from the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 12th and 13th chapters. But strive for the greatest gifts, and I will show you still more excellent ways. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have perfect powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, but it is way. It is not to irritable or Resentful. It does not rejoice in the wrong thing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to the child's ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, and now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting the lamps, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and, gives, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Just a couple of days ago, I got a beautiful surprise in my mailbox. A precious Christmas card from Lorna and family. Lorna, the card was beautiful and it was brave for you to share those last moments that you had with Norman here on earth. Over 47 years of sharing life, the joys and the sorrows, the good times and the challenging times, the Zoom boxes of your lovely family, letting us know how special they are to you. Like many of you, after the news, I began to go down memory lane trying to think of the last phone call I had with Norman and the last in-person visit. That last visit before the pandemic hit is one that I treasure. As we sat in Lorna's apartment and Norman's apartment and I looked around at all the lovely things on the walls, I heard the beautiful stories of why they are reminders of the families, the families that formed them and then the other reminders that are created from the family out of 47 years of love and commitment. Herbert, Meredith, Neil and Lucy, Ruben and Iris, Sarah and Mike, Annabelle, William and Megan. One of the things that Norman shared with me was his favorite photo. He shared with me how it was taken at someone's wedding. I don't remember whose wedding. But he had it there because it was his favorite, because he said the smiles were natural. When we pose for pictures in a wedding, we all pose with our smiles. And he said, but then after you take the formal ones, you yell group hug. And the photographer got the natural smiles, the smiles that we all carry in everyday life. That photo was precious to him. The fact that he shared that wonderful story with me, my very first child was married in October, and now I'm able to have a similar message and memory because of him sharing the joy of the smiles on his family's face. Family held a special place in Norman's heart, choosing to stay on the family farm so that his children could have the same experiences that he enjoyed. The scripture readings that Sarah's family read, that Lorna and Herb and Neil and Sarah all chose, they're beautifully woven together on various meaningful areas of Norman's life. The first passage, the passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, speaks of the greatest gift, which is love. It also tells us that that love grows. And it's in different ways as we get older. Our love grows stronger and then it reaches out in various ways as we go through the challenges. Like Neil spoke about, the love that he shared with many after his accident. He showed that love in a new way. And Norman showed his love by memories that remain some of the memories that remain of that love is his ability to work hard, the ways that he developed new ways to do farming, but also I heard about the way that he was able to stop after a hard work day and take in a tall glass of lemonade or root beer or to enjoy some ice cream. To enjoy his family and his friends, special friends group that he met with all the time, things that he did in the community, like participating in theater, college friends, friendships that are developed here in the community. All people are better because they met Norman Sawyer. Psalm 121 that we heard is one of my favorites because in times of trouble, we don't know where to turn. 
after Norman's accident. I'm sure it was a very scary time. And in times of unknown and fear, we need to hear the promises of God's presence. Psalm 121 reminds us that in the midst of the unknowns, God is there. I'm sure living each day with a disability and declining health, the psalm reminds us that God is there in our challenges. As many people wrote, and I haven't had a chance to read them all because every time I go to the obituary page, there's even more. But I hope that you'll take time to read those remembrances that are out there. Many people wrote that Norman persevered and held his head high after the farming accident that left him paralyzed. Paul writes in Romans about suffering, we're not able to fully know the sufferings that Norman endured. But we do know and we did see his character. We saw his endurance and we saw the hope that he lived. There are many wonderful things that are written out there. And like I said, the first one I saw was from Brian. Brian's family grew up here, worshiped every week with the Sawyer family. Here's what he wrote. A pillar of the Princeton community who loved farming the hills, kind man and a true cornerstone of Zion Lutheran Church. He and Lorna raises some fine children and their legacy is assured. In our grief, we stand confident in God's promises that are given to us through the life, death, and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus. Because Jesus lives, we know that we live. The baptismal font is right there, front and center, because it's right there in the waters of baptism that we receive the promises that God lives in the gift of the Holy Spirit. That same Holy Spirit that we receive in that baptism was there with Lorna and Norman as he left this earth for a heavenly home where he was greeted with Jesus and we know that he lives in God's presence with all the saints who've gone before him, his parents, many other family members, and most recently, Lorna's brother, Ken. The Gospel reading from Matthew tells us to not hide our light of Christ that is living right here in us, but to let that light shine through our good works. The glory of God is made known. Norman lived his life grounded in the love that he knew in Jesus Christ. And that love carried him his whole life. So in this time of grief, we trust God's promises. And not only that, but we boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces hope. Hope is not disappointed. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us.
Together with the whole church, let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we pray the prayers of intercession, each petition will end with God of mercy, and you're invited to respond with hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your presence. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, Hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn, and assure and certain hope in your loving care, that casting all their sorrows on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us all who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of everlasting life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give, thank, give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead and in whom our hope of resurrection dawns. The sting of death has been removed by the glorious promises of his risen life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me gathered together by the holy spirit let us pray as jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Through Jesus, crucified and risen, we are united with all the saints. Come to the banquet which the Lord has prepared for you.
body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. Let us commend Norman into God's grace. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Norman Wayne Sawyer. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints and light. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Our recessional hymn is when the saints go marching in. Feel free to clap or tap your foot or whatever to go along with the music. 